Welcome to Beyond Synth. Please note, Beyond Synth is an explicit program and may contain inappropriate language. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Today's show is brought to you by... 195 by Ogre. Ogre, the guy responsible for the theme song for this show, is back with a sequel to his kick-ass soundtrack album, 194. 195 is an epic soundtrack to a dystopian techno-thriller full of amazing themes and sci-fi action. With nods to classic 80s action and science fiction, 195 will teleport you to a cyberpunk battleground where the war between the men and the machines rages on. But don't take my word for it, just listen to how awesome this is. That's 195 by Ogre. This album is amazing and it makes me happy to endorse awesome music. You can pick it up at ogresound.bandcamp.com. That's O G R E S O U N D.bandcamp.com. 195. Hey guys, this is Christine and you're listening to Beyond Synth. Have a very Merry Christmas. Yo, this is Ogre on Beyond Synth, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, this is Norman Ritter, alias Alpha Boy. I wish everyone a fresh Christmas and I hope you all get a lot of expensive gifts. Hey guys, this is Betamax, wishing you a very Merry Christmas from the Beyond Synth family. Cheers. Hello children, this is DAD, wishing all Beyond Synth listeners a Merry Friggin' Christmas. Hello Andy, this is John Rooney, a.k.a. Hoyer. I just want to wish you and all your listeners a very happy Christmas Hi, Merry Xmas to Beyond Synth and all its listeners. And happy holidays. And this is Protector 101. Merry Christmas from Droid Bishop and Beyond Synth. Uh, wishing you all a great holiday season. And may your year 2015 adventures start off with a bang. Cheers. Hey everyone, hey it's Groove Worthy. Merry Christmas Merry to Christmas. all the Beyond Saints podcast listeners. Hey, what's up, party people? This is Dana Jean Phoenix wishing a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday season to all you awesome Beyond Synth listeners. Hey, this is LA Dreams. I want to say Merry Christmas to Beyond Synth and all their listeners and have a very Happy New Year. Season's greetings to everybody in Beyond Synthland. This is John Gray Vogel, a.k.a. Vector Sector, saying Merry Christmas. Ciao, everyone. This is Vincenzo Salvia. I wish a Merry Christmas to Beyond Synth and listeners, but not to the Synth 12 Sunday opponents because they didn't ask me to record the Christmas message. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Arcade High, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, this is Dallas Campbell. Merry Christmas to Beyond Synth and all its listeners there out there. Hello, this is Sunglasses Kid, wishing everyone at Beyond Synth a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh yeah. Ah, shit, spill a bit. This is a <clears throat> This is Highway Superstar. Happy holidays. Hey, this is Kyle from Midwave, and I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Ramadan, Happy Boxing Day, Happy Fiesta of Our Lady of Guadalupe, or whatever you celebrate, to Beyond Synth and all the listeners. 
Hi, this is Sam uh, Heckblad here. And this is Joanna. And we wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, every listener on Beyond Synth and Andy, of course. And hope you guys get a lot of good presents. And hope uh, Yul Tomten will visit you. So keep listening to Beyond Synth and stay 80s, peeps. Have a good one. Happy New Year. Merry Synth, Miss Synth Heads. It's your boy Swagbot, and this is Beyond Synth Christmas episode. Merry Christmas, Andy Lass. <laughs> Hello, hello to all you Beyond Synth listeners. I am the hoo-ha, bringing it to ya with the boo-ya, right? My friend Andy told me to mention Beyond Synth to tell you lot to have a Merry Christmas. But I don't want to do that. Everybody go to Retro Promenade and listen to Time Slap. That's how I roll. Hoo-ha, Mike Mendoza. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love you. Hi, I'm Kid Cassio. I want to wish all the listeners of Beyond Synth a very happy Christmas and hope everyone has a great 2015. Hey there, welcome to the show. Merry Christmas. My name is Andy Last. This is Beyond Synth. This is the season finale of Beyond Synth Season 2. So very exciting stuff, and we've got some fun returning guests. As per Christmas tradition, a look a set returns. We talk about their new album and have a very, very silly time. So it's all very exciting. We've come to the end of a second season, so you guys can look forward to season three sometime in uh, 2015. In the meantime, let's get through some business. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Andy Last. Please like the Beyond Synth Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash beyond.synth.podcast. Please follow Beyond Synth on SoundCloud. Uh, that's where all the episodes get posted. So if that's where you're listening, don't forget to hit that little like button, uh, that little heart there, and uh, please share and please comment. And hey, let's be friends. You can friend me on Facebook. I'm Andy Synth on Facebook. Okay, what else? Uh, the Beyond Synth theme song is by Ogre. Don't forget that. Of course, we're going to be talking a lot about Ogre today because not only was he the episode sponsor, but we will be giving away some free copies of the very album 195 that we talked about in the intro there. And uh, yes, his song Sure Thing is the theme song of Beyond Synth, and it is off the album Calico Braun, which you can get at ogresound.bandcamp.com. Also, thanks to Dallas Campbell for helping with elements of the intro. And as always, thank you to He Mantis for doing the episode episode write-ups and organizing the artist links for the Beyond Synth SoundCloud page. And just before we get to look his set, um, like I mentioned uh, briefly, we're giving away some albums today. So it's all very exciting. There's going to be a trivia question, which I will ask you at the end of the show. So today we're giving away three copies of Ogre's 195, which you heard some samples of at the start of the show. And also Dallas Campbell, who you remember from uh, episode 28 of Beyond Synth, is also giving away two of his albums, uh, Pagoda and Origin Seeds, which are both cool. So what I'm going to do basically is uh, we're going to go to the show and you're going to have a lot of fun because look, as said, are a bunch of fun guys. And uh, when the show's over, I'm going to ask uh, several trivia questions for these specific releases. So there'll be a trivia question for the Ogre album, and then there'll be a trivia question for Pagoda and then one for Origin Seeds. And that's all I have to say about that. So Merry Christmas, uh, everyone, and enjoy the return of La Cassette.
everybody. Have a very merry... No, not have a merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Christmas <laughs> special. And I am joined once again as a yearly tradition. It's a pleasure to be on the Beyond Synth podcast. <laughs> we'll let her talk in a second. I am joined... Once again, as per Christmas tradition, with the very talented and fun guys who comprise Lucaset. Hi, guy. Just a quick correction there. I am actually a dullard. You're a fucking wanker. <laughs> Excellent. So, joining us today is, of course, Adam McNabb. Hello. James Nalipa. Hiya. Joe Wood. Hi, Andy. Let's commence catching up. As they say, you sound like you've been drinking, Andy. Yeah, I just uh, just had a couple shots. Oh, either that, or you're very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I've just put on my radio personality. You've changed, man. Yeah, well, you know, I'm hit the big time now. Oh, well, good for you. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> and uh, of course, we're also joined by the robot lady from the Lucaset track tonight. <laughs> Adam, mm. what have you been doing? Working. Tell me about it. No. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. <laughs> but yeah. Do you guys want to talk about Christmas for a little bit? Talk about the Christmas cheer and the spirit, etc. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I've just been working, mate. I've been doing a lot of uh, you know promotional work, so I've, I haven't had time to do anything. As soon as I get back from work, I've just been hitting the sack and then hitting my sack after. <laughs> oh. Have you ever, uh, working promotions around Christmas, had to dress up as Santa Claus or a Santa Claus-themed costume of any kind? Oh, I would, actually. Um, I applied for a sexy Santa. <laughs> <laughs> But they don't like chest hair, so... Oh, I should have done it. I'd have done it. <laughs> eh? I could have done it. I've got no chest hair. Yeah, but you've got to look sexy, though, Joe. Are sexy Santas like they walk around shirtless just with the pants and the hat? I think they've got the top slightly undone, but they've got muscly chests. I just didn't look the part, mate. I don't have white hair. I suppose they give you white hair anyway, don't they? <laughs> They'll give you all that as it comes with the job, done it? Oh, that's with your perks. As soon as you put on the suit, it's going to be like Tim Allen out of what's it called, Santa Claus. As soon as you put the suit on, you become fat over time. I'm going to say, I'm pretty sure they don't have Turkish Santa Clauses, do they? <laughs> They're missing out. Let's reminisce about uh, the comings and goings of this past year. Lots of fun stuff happened. You guys finally released your album. Well, we're going to talk a bit about some of the songs, but I would suggest to listeners that if they want to hear about some of the tracks, you know, some of the singles that made it onto the album, they can listen to the first time you guys were on the show, because today I'm going to focus on all the tracks that are new. So let's talk about my favorite track, or one of them, of the of the new tracks. Let's talk about Radio. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it all started, was it? You just played a little bit of a track, didn't you, Joe? A little bit of the old... I was on my honeymoon in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was messing around, not doing honeymoon type things on my laptop. What did I call it there? What did I can remember the original name? Was it honeymoon fuck up? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Part one. <laughs> I can't remember what we called it. Or I called it. Well, it was very arpeggiated, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, constant burn. He came up with this loop. It sounded pretty cool. And then I was just mucking about with. A few vocals, one I, dude? And then um, I just added some stabs and a few bits and bats, and then we reworked the structure of it. Because originally, the vocals in the chorus was actually in the verse at the beginning, I think. I can't remember. And then we switched it around. The main chorus was you saying, what do you know, wasn't it? Which it is now, but yeah. the main thing yeah, 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 yeah. the radio bit, in it now? Andy, do you just want to know what it's about? Or do you just... <laughs> 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 Should we start again? So basically, radio mm -hmm. is about a guy and a girl again. Someone used to date. At the beginning of the song where it says, you were my favourite song, but now she's everyone's. So like, she's like this superhero that everyone fucking loves now. Whereas before, when she wasn't as famous, he loved her. You know what I mean? I sort of, uh, I sort of interpreted to mean that this woman had become sort of a big... Um, uh, a filthy horror. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I like the way your robot voice pronounces the word a whore. But, but you know what I mean, right? Like, uh, with lyrics like, she was my favorite song, but now she's everyone's, you know, like she's, uh, she's sleeping around. Well, it's nice to know that people have different interpretations of it, really, <laughs> isn't it? So, uh... I thought it was about my honeymoon. Could have been as well. It's like, that's what I mean. Everyone's got their own thing about it. But for me, it was just about someone who loved that person and then they moved on and be a superstar and she's forgotten about him. To be fair, in my interpretation of the song, it doesn't really make any sense for the actual lyric of the your voice on the radio bit. Yeah. I mean, you could be listening on a walkie-talkie, listen to having sex with truckers. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you visited Canada for a month. Yeah, it was wicked. Did you have a good time? It was very nice, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's such an awesome place. Uh, everyone was really nice. And I kept getting free coffee because of my accent. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I tried to be as more broader and stupider mm -hmm. as I could be. Every coffee shop went into. How, how does that actually work then? It's the my accent. And I went, oh, that's fucking strange. Where are you from? Scotland. Do shops around here give Americans free drinks? Probably. I don't know. Oh, Canadanarians. Maybe I'll go there and find out. The bus probably knock you out and say, don't come back here with that funny accent ever again. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in my shop? <laughs> where, where, hang on. Where's cunt? What? I thought you were going to say you can't, but you didn't say it this time. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Get the fuck out of my shop, you can't. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wicked. It was um, at loads of burgers. Mm -hmm. Went to Burger Priest in, is it Gerard Street East? Who fucking cares? <laughs> I should have let her be the host. <laughs> anyway, what about you guys? Yo. Tell me about your Canada trip. I visited lots of jazz bars. I drank a lot of Toronto's water. Mm -hmm. And generally, Jay walked. When did you go there, James? Tuesday. <laughs> How was it? Satisfying. On that day? Yeah. Was the weather good? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we got a nice little uh, shopping center there, that eating center. Mm -hmm. Andy. Yes. I've never been to Toronto or <laughs> Canada. Where's our uh, special guest? Where's our special guest lady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joe, what the fuck? <laughs> Where is she? Oh, he's typing it. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what fucking folder you're going through right now. <laughs> Motions and transitions folder. Oh, uh, put it back in. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, I'm having sex with a clown. <laughs> You're my cyberball bugger. <laughs> there she is.
this interview's not going so well, is it? <laughs> not as going as smoothly as last time. Hi, Andy. Go fuck yourself home. What? What? <laughs> she didn't flow well there, that one. Hang on. Put a couple of commas in there. <laughs> <laughs> what do Canadians have? Root beer. Oh, yeah. Hey, Andy, can I borrow your root beer? Well, that was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andy, can I borrow your root beer? Hmm. Yes, much funnier the second time. Uh, does this character have a name? Judith. My name is Judith. Ask, ask us some questions, maybe. So when you were recording the intro to uh, Tonight and all that stuff about robots, uh, was that text given to you or did you just make it up? Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andy, can I borrow your root beer? Third time's the charm. Suck my balls. <laughs> That's the best thing that's ever happened to me. The girl from the Tonight Song, talk to me, man. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, James. Yes, uh, sir. What have you been doing, man? It's been like, it's been a year. Yeah. What's been keeping you busy? I've had a couple of new jobs, Andy. Tell me about them. I'm a finance manager now, Andy. That sounds dull. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's all right. It's all right. I quite enjoy it. We work. I work on a farm. Well, we got dogs and shit and horses, but we're not actually a farm business. Uh, this is really dull shit, Andy. Tell me about it. I want to hear about it, man. This is a catch up. I'm a finance manager of a wealth management firm. What does that mean exactly? Do you have like high power clients or do you like tell poor people how they can like get a mortgage or? No, no. I run the finance of our business. So are you happy then? You've got a happy life? Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the um, sexual abuse part of my life is not fun, but... Wow, what's happening there? Does that happen at work, or does that have to do with the animals, or what? Most of the animals, to be fair. They gang up on me, the bastards. Wait, so... <laughs> Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle. Kiss molested by the animals. It's not Dr. Doolittle, it's Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Wait, but... <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's back up here. I want to understand this animals thing. Yeah. So explain it to me. So essentially, I work at my boss's residence. He has lots of pets. So we've got dogs running about the office. We've got horses in the stablers. Do you ride them? No, no. We've got a pig that walks around the the court, the four court, courtyard, four court, the car four court. He doesn't <laughs> sell cars. <laughs> Um, Do the animals play a part in the business at all, or is it just he just happens to have animals? They're consultants. Oh, they are too? They help out? Yeah, they're consultants, so they go out and they earn the business. And are they better than you? Some of them are. Some of them are a bit rubbish, but... The pig. He's one of our top sellers, really. <laughs> so there's no dissing him. Well, that's, uh, that's exciting stuff, man. It's not. It's like not a handy. capitalist animal farm. It's like a capitalist animal farm. Yeah. That concept's a little too heady for my audience. Ooh. Rude to your audience. They're not very literary. It's like... Um, Can you somehow compare it to the film Babe, Pig in the City? Yep. If everyone did a shit on each other, some people would do a shit on others more. <laughs> What does that to do with Babe? Well, that's more to do with Animal Farm, but... If it were communism, it'd be right. equally shat on. I don't think Babe is anything like... Animal Farm. Well, it, it takes place on an animal farm. Yeah. But I guess uh, thematically it's not very uh, similar, no. I haven't seen it in ages, so. though. I haven't seen Babe, though, either. So. Uh, there's a lot of rape in it. It's not in Babe? Rape. Yeah. <laughs> When we did the last show, last Christmas, you gave me a teaser of Digital Power, which I played. Yeah. Tell me about that track, because you had that one ready for quite a while. Uh... That's a huge fucking cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Digital Power. That took a while to finish as well, didn't it, boys? I think they all did. Digital Power went through so many revisions. It was, uh... Digital Power. I think the songs that I write are just generally about love loss and robots robots robot tits this is the best kind man uh yeah the first track i sent i just had i think it just had uh, a woman orgasming on it <laughs> well let's uh, listen to some of that original demo oh yeah it's not that one <laughs> this always makes me want to do a shoulder dance
That uh, that sounded okay, actually, like the original version. Yeah, but the thing is, though, it's totally different lyrics. Yeah, I like them lyrics. It's totally different lyrics and totally different vocals. Joe, fuck, fuck, we'll, uh, we'll have to retract that digital power and put that one on. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to Jenkins. Jenkins, we've redone it. Were you guys happy with the... Uh... Because it was it was in the one of the top sellers on Bandcamp when it, when it was released. It was number one, Andy, at one stage. Yeah, it was. It was number one. I can't believe it. Were, did you feel vindicated that your life's work had uh, been accepted by the public? I don't know what that word means. Public. <laughs> 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 I think. Out of everything, we were shitting ourselves more than anything before it went out. We thought it, before it went live, didn't we? We were like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. What are people going to think? Ah, because we gave it to, how many people do we let, let it listen, let people listen to, to it? About 10, were it? 10, 12 people? 10, 12, and they had mixed. But I think it was more, the mixed reviews were more, more about the sort of mix down rather than the actual tracks, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we sent, we sent it to producers, didn't we? So we yeah. were going to get that sort of feedback. So. Yeah. so it was more about the audio sort of, side of stuff yeah. rather than the actual yeah. songs itself the thing is we kind of knew from the Facebook following you kind of know who's going to buy the album anyway mm-hmm. you know what I mean you, you know who's going to who's been waiting for the album because you, you see them on the Facebook site all the time Yeah. so, so the Facebook element gives it a good uh, indication of how well the album's going to do but it's I think it's done slightly better than what I thought it would do. So you were well aware that uh, Cassia Chowkowska was going to buy your album? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, I She's think so. She's a lovely girl. <laughs> yeah, lovely girl, I suppose lovely. SoundCloud's the same thing, though, isn't it? SoundCloud, we put, yeah. We put a track on SoundCloud, it gets a few thousand in a day or whatever. I think it's surprising how well it's done, to be fair. Yeah, I was quite, I was, it was an amazing feeling how people reacted to it and how, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you're always going to get one per, one or two people not liking it, but it's fine. Not everyone's going to like everything, but. You'd expect half the people not to like it, wouldn't you? That's sort of how things yeah. work, isn't it? But I suppose because it's not like, you know, it's not, it's not massive. It's not so you're only going to ever attract fans, really. So the one, you only get one or two. It's not mainstream, is it? So the people right? that are interested in listening to your music and are going to go and, and buy the album, you know, so. Yeah. And you can get a good indication of that from the followers that you have on Facebook. We're also planning on uh, rescoring Drive with the album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you see that? Did you see that, Andy? I, no, I, I don't know. Not I you. It. You're not Andy. <laughs> I know what it is. It just, it, I don't have Sky or whatever the channel that showed it, but it's such a shitty idea. It's just such a what? shitty fucking idea. Like, if you're going to, just so anybody who doesn't know, they did this version on British TV where they rescored the movie Drive. And it was, who's the dude that did it? Is he a DJ or? Zen Law. And what's his deal? He, he's a. Uh, no bad mouth. We might have to meet him one day if we become very famous. He's lovely. He's the best. Well, it's a he's flawed. Okay, man. fine. He can be the, he's a great guy, but it's a flawed idea. It's to just spoil it. The spoil of damn film. Well, especially when a movie is just as much recognized for its like soundtrack as it yeah. was for the film itself to then go and like decide that that's the soundtrack you want to fuck with. My main problem is that I don't, I don't mind that sort of idea because things like that are quite cool sometimes, but it's too soon. <laughs> that's not a case <laughs> I, think, I think it's too soon because it's... Well, well yeah, it's, I, it's I like not Metropolis, idea, you I know. I like the idea of changing a soundtrack on something that might have a shit soundtrack from the 80s mm. or something. Or exactly, yeah. Something without a soundtrack would be interesting to do. Well, they did that, uh, like there was that Giorgio Moroder version of uh, like Metropolis. Oh, I got that. I was going to do a read of it. You know, th- that stuff's cool. Like, that's neat. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I like. Yeah, yeah. But not doing a rescore of something, what is it, four years down the line with music that hasn't really changed much since. Yeah. And they're all sort of trying to copy bits of it anyway, weren't they? Mm. And I think the, it was badly executed as well because I kept having to turn it down when the music came on or turn it up when the dialogue came back on because it, it was all like in your face trying to make you listen to it. I don't think I saw... I was reading the comments on Twitter or something and I don't think anybody on there actually liked it. Yeah. It'd be like putting Britney Spears on The Godfather. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, yeah. It doesn't work. Although that would be funny now, but that's but that's a YouTube idea. That's not a fucking idea for television. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it, isn't it? It's just yeah. Bieber on Raging Bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we should do that. <laughs> Too many ideas. Isn't Justin Bieber Canadian? He is. Yes. Shame on you, Andy. Shame on you and your Shame country. Shame on you, Andy. <laughs> I like and your country. <laughs> It's not my fault, man. I got nothing to do with him. Hi, Andy. Hello. What was her name again? Joplin? Judith. Judith. 
<laughs> it wasn't Joplin? <laughs> That's a very common first name. I have an enlarged prostate. <laughs> Well, we asked Judith. We we heard Love Judith um, on on teletext, didn't we? You're my cube or prostate. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah, that was a typo. You're my cube and prostate. <laughs> You're my cyber prostate. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing, seriously? You're my Cuban prostate. Is that what she said? <laughs> yes. like you. I think that's the title for this episode. Yeah, do you know what? I haven't done any music for the past uh, month because of Destiny. So yesterday, I actually did some. Hey, there you go. There I you think go. I think I did some Saturday night, mm. and my mm. car and it crashed, and I lost it. You have not been playing Destiny. No, 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 no. So you should have a, a a whole new album ready for us. No, I'm just at work all the damn time. Well, speaking of songs you wrote, uh, let's listen to a bit of Fighter off the album, and then we'll uh, talk about it. The intention with Fighter, was it always to be uh, an instrumental track? Yeah, I think so. It was too... It's too synth-laden to be anything else, so... You know, with them ripping leads and whatnot, so... It was always going to be a instrumental. Were you inspired by anything? Yeah, Joe did a track. <laughs> and then I nicked his bass line. <laughs> <laughs> or I nicked the... It was more the pattern, wasn't it? It was more the pattern of the <laughs> bass line. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the sort of... The speedy 16th little... 16th in it. Yeah, yeah. 16th note. Type and then it just went from there, really. I invented 16th notes, you see. You're a very talented guy. Uh, I told all the different music software guys, hey, mm. guys, you can go higher than one slash eight. <laughs> what have you been up to with the entertainment-wise? you were watching any movies you liked? TV shows? Boardwalk Empire's just finished. Did they already have the finale? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've only seen the first three episodes of that show. It was good, but I, I never... Uh... Oh, it's brilliant. Well, I'll, I'll give it away for everyone now. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 I won't, no. Uh, Walking Dead has got very gruesome recently in terms of human killings. Uh, I've, I've been watching House. <laughs> you have, like, the same TV schedule as my wife. Oh, that's great. Uh, I like Hugh Laurie, though, <laughs> but he's getting a bit... From my understanding, whenever I walk in to see it, it seems to be very formulaic. Yes. No, that's that's my problem with it, but I still keep watching it. Every episode, it's like some big surprise that he's going to take on the weird yeah, case, and yeah. the, first, the first two or three attempts to cure it are just going to make the person sicker until they figure out the... That's the yeah. one. That's the one. I, <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't watch it. But you know when you feel like it was like with that with twenty four. I got to series eight. Series eight's terrible. I loved twenty four when it started. Back when it was like an, a niche thing and like not many people knew about it in the first season, and it was only when it came out on DVD that people started getting into it. And I was telling everybody I knew, I'm like, you gotta watch twenty four. It's so fucking good. And then that show just became like a cartoon. Like the first season of that show. So good. But it's not even like an action show. It's more like um, like a thriller. Yeah. In the subsequent seasons, they turn Jack into an action hero where he's like surviving plane crashes in like the same day. And, and I also felt that the writers got bored of the 24 hour format thing. Yeah. And so they, they kept on like changing the bad guy every three episodes. And by the end of it, you just didn't care like who the main villain was. So, like, season one, I think, is the best. Season two, I thought all the stuff that Jack did was cool, but then the stuff with his daughter, like, to keep the daughter involved in the storyline. Mm. So, she's, like, she's out in the woods getting chased by tigers and weird, like, forest rapists and stuff. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then season three was the one where he was like addicted to heroin and he fucking kicked the heroin addiction by noon because <laughs> because like they, they got bored with the storyline and it was just like, he, wasn't he addicted to heroin in the morning? Like how the fuck did he, <laughs> did he kick it? Like it's ridiculous. Hey. Oh. Let's talk. <laughs> let's go. I'll tell you what I liked was the track Here I Am, uh, which is neat. It's It's got a cool sound. Whose idea was it to do the chopping the vocals that way? Joe. All right, am I allowed to play a bit of the original Here I Am, or is that going to be a track later on? Where have I got the vocal from? Uh, Play it. I can't, I can't remember what it feels like. I feel so cold Oh, yeah. Without you. Tell me why here I am. Or was the night when was your skin? Close your eyes. Here sounded good though i mean like so you're saying you took the vocal from the unused track and then plopped it in this one yeah but like the track here i am is also a song that's sort of in two parts that's how i did it i did it as it's two separate ableton projects stick together right the first bit it was meant to be like a sort of a computer software program being born that was the idea yeah, it was meant to be an interlude wasn't it like a soft yeah, yeah. so like lots of sort of vangelis pads and stuff like that um and arpeggios Mm -hmm. And then I wanted it to break down a little bit like Arms of Mine going to something harder. So I did that as a separate track and then merged them together. Mm, it was good. Yeah. So was that something that was like a concept that you thought this would be cool if I did this or were you just messing around with the vocal? I think I just got the vocal because it's the only one that was sort of working. But it sort of made sense, didn't it, with the whole computer rebirth and then it all gets glitchy and it starts to die. Let's talk a bit about uh, James's beard. Yeah. How do you, how does everybody else feel about it? That's my favorite track on the album. It's a fucking it's a fucking nest. It's got generally it's got quite a bit of food in it and milk. Do you, do you put oil in it, James? I do twice a week. Yeah. It makes it grow some beard oil. Well. It's got fresh herbs and herbs. I once talked to a synthwave producer Ogre who uh, produced a line of beard oil. Did he? Yeah. Has he got his own beard? Yeah, he's got a big beard. I've got a big beard. Yeah, I've seen it. It's impressive. Thank you. Well, just the thing is, 
when you see other people who can do something like I can't, I can't grow a beard. You know what I mean? So it's always impressive to see people who. Uh, You've got a mustache, though, Andy. I do have a mustache at the moment. Mustache. A mustache. A what? A mustache. He's got a mustache. Mustache. This moose has got a dash. <laughs> We're recording this in the throes of uh, Movember. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, I was growing mine as well. I like yours, Joe, because it looks like you could grow, like, a Fu Manchu. Nah. It just kind of shows up at the sides, and you could just grow, like, six, like, really long hairs. I've got, like, a... Whenever I grow it, it's sort of sporadic, but there's, like, a massive bald point underneath underneath my chin. I'm pretty sure your your wife could grow a better beard than Joe. (laughs) Inappropriate. It's inappropriate, but (laughs) the truth. That's another Wikipedia fact. Tell me, guys, what the weather is like in England right now. You guys are in two different parts of England, but I imagine the weather is similar. No, we didn't realize this, but Adam's actually home. I'm back in Uddersfield now on my day off. Because I don't know if you notice, Andy, it's our birthday tomorrow. Uh, uh, it's our birthday last month. It was our birthday in yeah. November 4th. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Adam McNabb and I share the same birthday. That's but weird. Same Your month. birthday tomorrow, then? It certainly is. Why you're not on my calendar, then? You're, you're 33, not, Andy. You're not friends with him? I am friends with Andy. No, I don't say my real birthday. You got a big birthday plan there, Adam, for the birthday that you had last month? Uh, just had a massive wank. <laughs> <laughs> And I stuck a candle in the top of my fucking bell end and blew the candle out. <laughs> what What does that do? I got a big wish. What'd you wish for? A massive orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> and it didn't come true. No, I just chilled out because it was my day, uh, day off. You're doing some panto, panto mime for you North Americans. And uh, then you're going to fucking Japan. Talk about Japan. Yeah, buddy. Uh, and I'm going to go, <clears throat> I'm going in February time. So I'm going to go back to, because I did it four, can I, I remember when it was what, about four or five years ago, four years ago. I went there to sing jazz and blues for Disney. And before I got there, I thought it was going to be like dressing up as goofy or something like that. But no, we actually dressed up in nice tuxedos and just sing about how jazz came to be. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really good gig. And I really enjoyed it last time. I thought, you know what? A lot of stuff's happened this year. I need to get out of England, so I might as I want to go back to the time, so. <laughs> If you just keep it that vague, it sounds like you committed a crime. Yeah, I, yeah, I did things <laughs> I... A lot of stuff has happened. Do. Yeah, I did a lot of things I regret, and I really need to go to Japan. Uh, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm off to Japan. I'm going to, I'm going to sing my heart out. You're going to write Tokyo Blues 2. Tokyo Blues Part 2. Return to Tokyo. You're going to fall in love with a Japanese lady boy. Boy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we both went there. And then Joe and James are going to come out and they're going to marry... They're going to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to live happily ever after under a, a, a blossom tree, cherry blossom tree. How long do you say you were going for? Six months, I believe. With, with the option to extend, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Mm. It'd be cool. I just want to earn some money and, you know, and uh, uh, hopefully it'd be cool to do a gig out there, you know? Yeah, You man. should find as backup two, like, Japanese guys that look kind of like Joe and James. <laughs> <laughs> right guys I've got a couple of props here for you you're going to be called Joe I'm going to put a massive wig on you uh, I-, I need you to stick this needle into your belly every now and again <laughs> and you're going to be called James I'm going to put this massive pube mask around your face <laughs> I think Andy was just sick into his hands. No, I, I was pouring some water. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, are you often stabbing yourself with needles? Diabetic. Do you have to do that or only if you feel like something weird's coming on? No, no, type one, so I have to do it before any food. What? You mean you're fucking needling yourself every day? Yeah, I look like uh, some sort of addict. When I first saw him do it, it freaked the shit out of me. I thought you were going to stab me. <laughs> <laughs> he stood up right. He stood up next to me. I sat down on the sofa. He stood up next to me, pulled his top up. I thought, oh, is this where I'm going to die? <laughs> I'm going to die getting touched by his belly and then stabbed. And um, he, just, he just looked at me and he stuck his needle into his stomach and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
it was weird, but I, I've come to accept it now. Oh, thanks. But yeah, that's good of you. <laughs> <laughs> I've told him not to do it in front of me, though, even if I'm with him for, like, three days. Wait, so you have to do it before every meal? Well, really, I should do it before every bit of food. Don't you have diabetics in Canada? Yeah, but I've never <laughs> talked to one, like, in detail. Like, <laughs> I know some people who've got, like, the type 2, where it's just you have to change your diet. Because you're fat. I always thought it always involved just changing how much sugar you ate, but that's because I don't understand what it is. Type 1's autoimmune, so my body, when I was 8, attacked the cells that make insulin ah. and got rid of them. When did you become diabetic, Joe? When did you decide to become diabetic? Yeah. <laughs> it's a life choice. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's in the same category with vegetarians now, isn't he? I'm pro-diabetic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they should get married, though. Oh, no, yes. You're exactly right. It's very kind of you to, to have us back on your show, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> After the last debacle. I would I would hardly call it a debacle. I would call it a success. Successful piece of shit. A successful piece of shit. The most successful. Are you going to keep this in the interview, Andy? <laughs> no, I'm not. No. no. Fuck no. Although while we're talking about actual debacles, Joe, I heard you uh, accidentally deleted all of your files. Days before we had to have the album ready, mm. I deleted all the files. So wait, so I, I don't understand. <laughs> Actually, trashed all the uh, all, all the album songs and compositions. How the hell did you do that? I know too many shortcuts, and that can be a bad thing. Mm. My usual way I delete things is a hit command backspace. Yeah. And then I quickly get rid of it in the trash by command shift backspace, which deletes it forever. Right. On this occasion, I was just deleting one file. I did command shift. Then I did command shift backspace, but when I pressed command shift backspace, it said deleting 30,000 files. Oh no. And I quickly cancelled it, but they'd all gone. Oh man. Yeah. So what the yeah, fuck so happened? Yeah, so literally there? had a couple of days yet before the album was finished, before the album's ready, sorry. And uh, he fucking deleted it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. True story. Yeah, luckily I had, um, it was mostly my stuff though, obviously, wasn't it? It was uh, my Ableton stuff, which is probably half the album. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> like, <it's laughs> still, like, <laughs> you keep painting the story, but you don't explain how the hell you got it back. We had already mixed everything down pretty much, I think, haven't we? Everything had been got ready for Steve. Yeah, hang on, does Steve know this? Steve? Yeah, did he know this? We mentioned it, didn't we? Can't remember. <laughs> We're not going to get told off. <laughs> <laughs> I have recovered everything though, but they're just all, um, they're all like, uh, they don't have file names. Tell me about the track, This Is All We Know. That happened by chance. I was mucking about with that Sex Sax VST. But actually, that was an add-on from um, Getaway. So when I was doing Getaway, I was trying to do like a little instrumental bit towards the end take it into like a minor dark thing just started mucking about with the bass riff and stuff like that and uh, that became this is all we know and i actually did that in a day which was mental enough started in the morning and then put the vocals down like probably about 12 o'clock and then the sax was in the evening and that was it done that was one of the quickest tracks i've done yeah yeah, yeah. there's no structure to it it's like i said that's becoming like a theme in the way i write really there's no structure you know, like same with like perturbators, um, when I did meet Jimmy, kind of like a similar thing to that. But uh, yeah, it just that just came from nowhere.
let's uh, let's talk a bit about the games, man. We've been playing Destiny, but I think we're, we're about to pack it up. Or I am. I'm done with it. Um, I don't know, because I've been doing this bloody job on the road. I've been on the road for six weeks, and it's just doing my nothing. I can't play no games, because I haven't got internet. But um, I know you guys have been playing it. You seem to be doing well with it. But it's just getting a bit, it just seems to be getting a bit boring. Do you know, you guys sound such nerds. I tend not to listen to whatever you're... T- <laughs> Because you're playing uh, a crap uh, console, uh, James. Oh, my God, I'm on level... It's, tw- it's amazing how something becomes nerdy when you're not I'm, involved. I'm on level 22 and I've got the, 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 the magic hat of, of deceit. It's not far off. No, it's, no, it's not far <laughs> off. But the thing is, though, James, if you're not in the wolf pack, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they said, don't you? What did they say, James? Go on, they say if you're not in wolf pack... Yeah. You've probably got no sh- shoes. You know what they say, don't they, James? What do they say? Well, you know what they say, don't you? <laughs> Go on, what do they say? <laughs> if you can eat two dumplings, you can shit two assholes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, don't you? <laughs> what do they say? Go on, they say. You say you look at a stew too hard <laughs> and you get crabs. Well, you know what they say, don't you? Go on. If you've got thyroids, you've got tortoises. You know what they say? What do they say? They say. You know what they say, don't you? What they say? They say, if you look at the moon, your prostate falls off. You know what they say, don't you? Go on, what do they say? You know what they say? Go on. If you look at the sun too hard, you'll get your thyroids. <laughs> What's up with you in thyroids? <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say? The brain working <laughs> so hard. <laughs> you know what they say, don't you? I'll tell you what they say. Give a man a fisherman... <laughs> I need him to fish. <laughs> you know what I said. You know what I said. What do they say? Don't you? If you can touch your pancreas with your toes. <laughs> <laughs> You can listen to music with your clothes. <laughs> the rhyme scheme is incredibly important. I-, I think my favorite first half was if you stare too hard at a stew. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that's because he's had stew for tea. Like, oh. <laughs> this is such a great intro. I liked your oh. obsession with fucking... Uh, Internal organs as well. We uh, all- sorry, Andy. Sorry. What, what, what's going on again? Well, we're in the midst of creating a horrible, horrible podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, don't you, Andy? <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> He's South African, there, sir. He sounded like Judith. <laughs> he sounded like Oscar Spistuista. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about apartheid. Oh, I, I fucked. I lost it. That, that was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Irish people are always talking about apartheid. Well, you know what they say, don't you, Andy? Diplomatic immunity! <laughs> well, you know what you say, don't they? What'd they say? <laughs> if you can't walk with legs, then you can't chew glue. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm always expecting a rhyme scheme. Like, whenever you, like, have to come up with phrases and it's just like, you know, don't put meat in your pocket if you don't have love for the socket or whatever. And, like, <laughs> you, you have to sort of make it rhyme in order to... No, 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 it's just fables. <laughs> fables. So, you know what they said, don't you, Andy? What do they say? Give a man a fisherman. They said this already! <laughs> I know, but I'll... Give the man a fisherman. <laughs> Give the man, <laughs> man a fisherman. Give the man a fisherman well, is awesome. Work. Well, you know what they said, don't you? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? If you just joined us... Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Judith? In fact, let's properly ask Judith some questions. I've made a slower and sexier. Okay. Sexy. Oh, that just sounds sexy. Yeah. Nothing sexier than a woman saying sexy. I can fit all you guys in my mouth at once. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice. Go on, fire away then, Andy. Well, as we wa- uh, as we whap down, <clears throat> wound down. Let's <laughs> <laughs> wind down, boy. With a wind down. All right. Let's ask that lady, Judith. Yeah, Judith. Let's ask Judith how she feels about each member of uh, of Lucasette, because I imagine you've all 
had Judith, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Basically, we was in Starbucks, all three of us, all enjoying a nice hot cocoa. James was wearing a nice roll neck purple top, and his beard was half the size it is today. <laughs> Joe was wearing tweed jacket with leather patches on the old elbows, sporting a lovely ivory pipe and a lovely sequined beret. Then I came in. She walked in on a wheelbarrow. She got wheeled it in, and we saw it cornering it. When she started talking, she asked for a latte. Go on, Judy, say, tell me how you said it. When you talk to the Starbucks guy, say, you'd like a latte. Tell us. You're my latte lover. Exactly. <laughs> and we also were writing that. We were writing tonight, and she came in, and I just said to her, can you change latte for cyber? <laughs> she said no. No. Is that it? What? <laughs> <laughs> We're all clearly in a strange place, so we're gonna we're gonna do a <laughs> wrap up. I will try my fucking hardest to edit this into something. It's not gonna go well, is it? Do you feel like you've wasted your time tonight, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, we're gonna do a we're gonna just do an out of the blue wrap up. How about that? All right, bye. We got no. I mean, <laughs> 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 it's been lovely to have you guys back. Thanks for having us. We had uh, we had a slice. It's been. Uh, I should say, because uh, I didn't actually say it at any point in the uh, during the interview, but um, your album was uh, very good, and I really enjoyed it, and I think a lot of people did. Thank you. I know, I, I know, I'm doing like my radio voice, but I mean that. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, when I hear the radio voice, I know you mean every word, because yeah. <laughs> there's some part of it that sounds incredibly insincere. So the bottom line is, uh, it's been lovely to have you on. You too, mate. Been lovely Thank you, Andy. Well. I enjoy talking to all of you, and we all had a great time. And I uh, look forward to uh, future look is set when uh, you guys are writing songs between fucking Japan and England. And I think it's going to be wicked. I think I think this this year's now is a write off for me for music. I think I'm going to start fresh in January, and I'm back. I don't know you boys. The next album could just be called Left to Island Vices Two, and then we just have all the same tracks, but put a two after them. Yeah. Mm. Maybe we could get Michael McDonald to sing on it. Michael McDonald! Yeah, real singer. <laughs> oh, Michael! So how about you yeah, individually give us a little sign-off or something? See you next year. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Let's start again. Start again. Okay. Ho, ho! <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you very much for all your, uh, for all your support and shit. <laughs> let's start, let's start, let's start, let's start No, let's I like that again. one No, Joe and James, you go first uh, Happy Christmas everyone Hope you all enjoyed the album James, you all go now I'm just wishing you a Merry Christmas Don't, don't, don't use that one, Andrew <laughs> why, do we do, why do we do a synchronised one? <clears throat> Merry Christmas everybody Hi, this is Lacassette I'm Morgan Freeman <laughs> Lacassette came to Shawshank Redemption back in 1935 Joe Got bum senseless. My <laughs> poor guy. And all he said to me was, get busy, get busy living or get busy dying. Uh, Joe got bummed senseless. <laughs> uh, uh, Judith, what the fuck are you doing with these men? Was that her boyfriend? Oh, shit. She's back. All right. No, listen. <laughs> Ken's back. Merry Christmas, everybody. Are you trying to start some shit? J <laughs> <laughs> James. Yes, sir. From my heart to yours, it was a pleasure to speak with you again. From my hand to your pants, Andrew, <laughs> it was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Joe. Yeah. Hi, Andy. It's been lovely to speak with you. Lovely speaking to you as well, Andy. I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. Thank you, I will. Andy Lass came to Shawshank Redemption. I don't think the prison is called Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I don't no, know what it's brilliant. called. What's it called? It's called Shawshank, isn't it? Is it, Sha is it, Sha is it Shawshank Prison? Yeah. That'd be a scary fucking prison. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Adam McNabb. What? Listen. Merry Christmas. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, Sancho. <laughs> it's talking to me now. Come on. <laughs> so... Have fun in Japan. Thanks, mate. Oh, it's been wicked. I really enjoyed this conversation. 
Well, <laughs> <laughs> nice being with you, mate. Thank you. And thanks. Thanks, Joe and James. Thanks, Adam and James. Thanks, Adam Synth and Andy Synth. Thanks, Andy's mum. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, cheers, Judith, you slag. Where's Ken? I go, we got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Lucas Set. Uh, always a lot of fun and a lot of nonsense. And now it's time for the trivia questions. So here's the deal. It's sort of unfair to make this time sensitive because that's what I did last time. I did sort of a first come, first serve. But of course, not everybody listens to the episode the second it's posted. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to put your names in a hat and you've got four days from the posting of this episode to get your answers in. However, you need to follow the protocol and send your answers to the Beyond Synth Facebook page. So don't send them to me. Don't send them to Andy Synth. Send them to the Beyond Synth Facebook page and then just send a message to the Facebook page. And that is how you have to submit the answers to these stupid questions I'm about to ask you now. Oh, and before I do, um, you are allowed to submit for all three. Okay, so here's the deal. For a copy of Ogre's album 195, please tell me what was the name of the computer voice lady on the Tonight Song. So remember how this episode was uh, frequently interrupted by a lady with a computer voice? What is her name? It's okay if you don't get the spelling right, but you gotta be in the ballpark. And for a copy of Pagoda by Dallas Campbell, please answer this trivia question. Uh, Early in the interview, Lucasette member Joe Wood mentioned going on a honeymoon somewhere. Where did Joe Wood go on his honeymoon? And finally, for a copy of Origin Seeds, Dallas Campbell's album Origin Seeds. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm making up these trivia questions on the spot. Um, let's see, what, what did we talk about? We talked about diabetes. We talked about Adam going to Japan. We mentioned Destiny. We mentioned James working with dogs. Okay, I'm going to play you a sample of one of the video game pieces of music I played throughout the interview, okay? So listen to this and tell me what game that's from. In conclusion, you want to win a copy of 195, you got to tell me the name of the robot chick's voice. You want to win a copy of Bogota, you got to tell me where Joe Wood went on his honeymoon. And if you want to win a copy of Origin Seeds, you got to tell me where that song came from. And that song again is... Listen, guys, it's been a lot of fun. We got a lot of new listeners this year, so that's cool. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the show. And I look forward to making season three next year with a whole bunch of new and exciting guests for you. In the meantime, if you're new to the show or if you only joined this season, uh, you know, go back and listen to the back catalog. You know, if you enjoy the show, there's lots of uh, fun interviews with uh, lots of cool people and lots of cool music. Uh, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a Happy New Year, and I hope you make some New Year's resolutions that are completely feasible, that you will not break within the first week. Uh, Lots of gym memberships and diets, and that's all I have to say. That's it. That's all I got. So, guys, thank you for listening. I'll talk to you in a few months' time. This has been Beyond Synth. Well, that was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who, who the fuck were there? Did you enjoy the show? Yeah, yeah, it was good, mate. It was really good. I feel like this is an appropriate way to sort of uh, end the season because you were there at the very start of season two of Beyond Synth and that skit with uh, Vincenzo. Yeah. And so now here you are, bookending season two. That's it. Eh? Always a pleasure. Never to chore with you, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> I should say we're recording this uh, several, actually, uh, months after we recorded our interview uh-huh. with the three lads. Three tenors. You, you were saying you were going to do Panto, and you've just done it, right? So was today your first day? Yeah, it was the opening show today. It went, went really well. And I promised I wasn't going to laugh on stage until the last minute. 
And I just went into hysterics. <laughs> but, all, but everyone loved it anyway, so yeah, it's all good. I liked your makeup. Oh, it's all right, isn't it? The pompous prince. Mm. Prince Galant. <laughs> You're a very pretty girl. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> it's your mother's makeup. <laughs> So, man, in my show opening, I never really properly addressed the fact that some of the tracks we listened to were actually demos. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't really talk about that, did we? No. <laughs> but, it was, but, <laughs> but it was a cool little thing. So I think like some people listening are going to be like, where, where do I get those songs? And I realized I never properly... Well, you never know. The thing is, though, listening to them back now, like we, not what we did, I might even use them into a new track, you see. So listen out. Mother truckers. Yeah. <laughs> um, here, you can help me do something. Go on. I was doing some uh, giveaways for uh, some free albums that people were uh, giving away download codes. Yeah. And I, uh, I got some more. And this is already after the fact. I've already recorded my outro and the show was all wrapped up. Yeah. So give me some sort of trivia question. Or it doesn't have to be trivia. It can be anything that uh, the people who want the prize are going to have to write to me. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, so I have two more uh, Dallas Campbell download codes to give away. So we got uh, Close Encounter, the Magic Happened album. And I have a download code to give away for that. So what should the person writing in who wants to get that free copy, what should they write to me? Can I have that album, please? <laughs> Simple as. Why do you need me to fucking tell that? <laughs> I also have a copy of the Ballooner Takes Flight, uh, the other Magic Happened album by Dallas Campbell. And if you want to win that... So the first person to text in, give me that collection of music, please, you stupid wanker. <laughs> And as I think I said, everyone is free to enter to win all of the albums if they want to. So you can send me five emails with five different messages. You can send me one email that says all the things you need to do, and I'll put you in uh, five draws. And maybe, who knows, maybe somebody will win more than one album. It'll be great. Hang on, hang on, hello? Crew are going, I need oh. to lock the theater. Okay, okay, we've got, Andy, we've got to go do the lock in theater. Okay, man, uh, listen, it was good talking to you. Uh, have a Merry Christmas. Uh, thanks for helping me wrap up uh, season two of Beyond Synth. And uh, yeah, dude. But anyway, the reason why I'm not going to Japan is because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, it's change of plans. That's what we're going to talk about, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, well, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Anyone who's going to write to you to say congratulations and have fun in Japan, they don't need to because... I'm not going! Hey! <laughs> but we'll talk about that next season. Not at the time. Yeah, change your plan, change your plan. Massive change of plan. <laughs> but I'm not editing out of the show. Okay. Take care, dude. Okay, I gotta go, Andy, because I got to let me in. Feliz Navidad, motherfucker. Love you, bye. Merry Christmas, bye. <laughs>